Kyle Brown from Shopper Motorsports here with Johnny Jump from ODI Grips. And today we're talking about their full line of products that we sell here at Shopper Motorsports. So Johnny, ODI does way more than just power sports stuff. What are some of the other things that ODI does? So ODI's specialties came from BMX back in the early uh, or late 1970s, early 1980s. Um, the company was founded primarily in BMX grips, uh, make lots and lots of bicycle grips, but the core is, is BMX, BMX dirt, BMX street, BMX race, uh, mountain bike, downhill, cross country, all mountain. Now we do road bike tape for, for 10 speeds and road bikes. And then we have a whole power sports line of motocross, off-road, ATV, snowmobile, watercraft. Heck, you can use them from anywhere from motocross to dirt track to hill climb, road racing all types of different things. So if it's got a motor and handlebars, we can outfit it. There you go. So Johnny mentioned they got their start in bicycles. Now I remember these mushroom style grips when I was a kid. I had these on my red line and on my GT. These things are pretty fantastic. Yep. So this is what really started the company and then tell us a little about that progression. So the, the slip-on grips obviously uh, is where it really started. Uh, the mushroom grips, which Kyle mentioned, all through the 80s became just like a normal, that's what you used if you were into grips or into bicycle riding. You, you, whatever bike you had, you had to have the mushroom grips. And we've done many, many collabs with SE Racing, with Yeti Bicycles, with YT Industries. We do a number of bicycle racer uh, collaborations. Aaron Gwynn, Jeff Emig, there's, uh, there's been a host of team riders that we've had that have helped promote, help develop, and design some of the grips that we use today. So something new that I learned earlier today was the fact that Ricky Carmichael has been part of the ODI team or, or development process for a really long time. When did that begin? So the original relationship between the RCH Suzuki and ODI came in 2012 when Ricky Carmichael and Kerry Hart were putting together their Supercross debut. And Ricky got to see some of the development of the handlebars, got to see um, how the product was made, got to see the quality of the, of the product, got to hear the riders' responses at the very highest level with Ken Roxon, so forth. Um, and he just became a fan of the brand ever since. And he had a very close relationship uh, with the previous brand manager for ODI. And uh, he's been a, a rider and ambassador for the brand ever since. And <laughs> we just uh, started a new collab that we'll get into a little bit here with Ricky Carmichael. So he's becoming more of uh, the, the promotional team here at ODI. Now, Johnny, as far as the lock-on grips go, it started way back, and it started with the mountain bike segment and then kind of rolled forward. So for a long time, we used the slip-on grip in motocross until what year? So get us caught up there, if you would. So in the mid-90s, uh, in the mid-90s, the company developed this lock-on technology. And essentially, we do all of our injection molding in our facility in Riverside, California. And the, to make a lock-on grip, you would first injection mold the tube uh, for the grip, and then you would injection mold the grip to the tube. And ODI um, had designed, patented, designed for the tube to lock into these billet aluminum um, clamps. And so every grip would use two clamps. Um, there's a 2.5 millimeter bolt that would hold the grip securely to the handlebars. It's 360 degrees of metal to metal contact, so it's extremely secure. Um, so you'd, you'd injection mold the grips, and then you could snap on any color clamps uh, that you so desire. So we make eight to 10 different colored uh, clamps, and that was the, the version one, if you will. And so that mountain bike technology in the 90s um, started to become very popular, not only for ATV riders, but also for watercraft. If you imagine riding a jet ski or sit down and how fast they go and into so the middle of the water, <laughs> trying to get a grip to uh, be securely fastened to one of those machines, extremely difficult. So the lock-on technology uh, was an absolute hit in, in the watercraft. Um, and essentially it's the same style of grip, although we build little flanges in for the ATV and the, and the watercraft guys. Um, and then in early 2000s, um, they started developing the same type of technology for, for motocross and for off-road. Um, and it took a little while to perfect it. Um, 2002, Steve Lampson launched it in the uh, 125 Nationals. Um, he ran the system. But it wasn't until about 2010 that they really perfected it and it became um, the system that it is today. And then in 2013, we collaborated with Jeff Emig to kind of make a larger splash for, for that technology. And that technology is really great. So they absolutely have the patent on that lock-on technology. Now there's several other manufacturers in the motorcycle space right now that are doing a similar type of grip. 
Um, I think they're called clamp-ons and a couple other things. But if you take a close look at the actual clamp or lock part of that grip, they are very, very different. And if you do take a look at those, I think you're gonna come back to ODI as your grip of preference. Another thing I really like about the ODI grips is the fact that they're very versatile. So they look like a closed end grip that's gonna slide over and keep dirt and debris from going up into the bar. But they also have another neat feature built in that I really like because I'm, I'm a woods guy, I'm a, I'm a desert guy. I like to uh, get out there and I, I don't have a bike that doesn't have a set of bark busters on it. Now getting that hole cut in the end or the end of the grip cut off is always a bear, but ODI has a solution. John, you wanna tell us about it? So all of our lock-on motocross and off-road grips, with the exception of our, our newly released Emig Pro, when we mold the grip tube, we actually mold it with the ideology that it would be an easy knockout end. Um, so you can easily take a carpenter's knife or a X-Acto blade just inside, just outside of the logo, just inside of the end of the grip, and you can carve that out and then with a T-handle or a ratchet extension, you can put that into the end of the grip and you can pop it out and you'll have an open-ended grip for full wrap hand guards or for bark busters, as Kyle mentioned. Um, we have some, some riders that ride uh, the Hard Enduro Series. There's a lot of rocks, a lot of crazy stuff going on in the Hard Enduro Series and also Enduro Cross and so forth. So when you take your bark busters off, if you wanna have protection for your throttle tube and so forth, you can run our billet end caps, mm, um, put these on, it helps protect the throttle, helps protect the grip in the case of major tip over in a rock section. Um, and that way you're not left stranded out in the middle of the woods somewhere. Now when it comes to fitment for these grips, basically one part number does pretty much everything. They come with five different cams and the grip itself. So you choose the cam that's right for your bike and you have over what, 250 fitments for this, right? Yep. So every, every set of grips comes with five cams that fits most of the major two stroke and four stroke popular bikes that are out today. Obviously the Husqvarna's and KTM's come OEM with ODI grips. So you'd use the OEM style throttle cam directly onto the ODI grips. Um, and then we offer about six different uh, aftermarket throttle cams available for the KX65's and KX80's and YZ85s and DRZ400s and so forth. So there's a whole selection that you can look at online on the website and see exactly what cam is for you and make sure that when you get your ODI grips that you have it properly fitted for your, for your motorcycle. Now the ODI grips come in lots of different durometers, if you will, or different types of uses. Really quick, can you give us a rundown of the different feels that you're gonna find? In yes, these? so our, our most popular grip would be our, our standard ODI half waffle, full neural on the top section of the grip, and it's a full waffle on the bottom side of the grip. So there's many other brands that have a half waffle grip. Uh, it's a very tried and true design, mm -hmm. has a good feel, it's a good um, diameter of grip, and is very popular for off-road as, well as, as well as for motocross. So we've taken that grip and we've removed all of the waffle and made a very slim, no waffle, full neural grip grip. This is very popular for someone with smaller hands, someone that wants full feel to the bike, or even some of your women riders who have smaller hands that just want to have something uh, comfy. So those are two uh, very core grips. And then we have our off-road selection, which would be our Rogue Grip. The Rogue Grip has very large pads on it, uh, which helps to absorb vibration, provides a lot of dampening. Uh, at the same time, these pads are separated by grooves, and these grooves would allow any kind of mud or muck to run off um, if you're riding in a heavy, heavy rain, heavy water. Um, and it's a larger diameter grip. So if you're a larger rider or you need more padding, um, this would be a grip of choice for you to check out. Um, the Emig brand grip, uh, the Emig grip has been extremely popular uh, for our motocross riders and so forth. And then our newly re released Emig Pro. The Emig Pro is a much softer compound uh, than standard. And it has these specially designed ribs uh, that are directional uh, to each side. And they have these billet end caps uh, that go into the grip. Uh, the billet end caps help to protect the handlebar in the case of a crash or a tip over. You don't have the handlebar coming through the end of the grip. And it gives a little bit of a bling and cool factor to it. So we talked a little bit earlier about the price of these grips out on the floor before we came up here to the studio. Now the average cost of one of these grips is about 25 bucks, right? 25.95, yep. And then the Emig Pros are 28.95. Now, when you're looking at the cost of that, it's actually very inexpensive when you look at what goes into putting a traditional set of slip-on grips on your bike. So a slip-on grip's gonna cost, what, nine to 15 bucks. And then you gotta add glue to that, another four to seven bucks. And then if you're gonna wire tie it or safety wire tie it onto your bike, you're looking at the cost of the wire and the tool in order to put the wire on. When you're looking at a set of these grips at 25 bucks or so that get changed out in less than a minute or two, it's really a good deal. Yes.
I've safety wired a lot of grips in my time <laughs> and I never get it perfect. And as soon as you power wash the bike, a lot of times there'll be a little void in there. You get a little water underneath the glue mm -hmm. and all of a sudden your grip's slipping around. With the ODI lock-on system, you will never have grip slip. It will always be um, a secure feel. So ODI grips, definitely a staple here in the power sports marketplace. Now you guys do more than just grips. You also do handlebars. Now you have a neat new bar this year called the Controlled Flex Technology Bar, which is basically the same but an improved bar over your flight bar. Now, can you explain the differences between the two and which bar would be perfect for what type of rider? So the Controlled Flex Technology handlebar that, he's, that Kyle's speaking about, so essentially under wraps, there are many supercross teams and riders that run a crossbar style handlebar um, that actually cut the crossbar uh, to provide more flex in the handlebar. So you get the look of a crossbar style handlebar with the flex of an open cockpit style handlebar. So they would cut it, they'll tape it, tape it, tape it up and put the crossbar over the top of it to the outside, you would never know there was anything different in that handlebar, but it would provide significantly more flex. So ODI researched, researched this, studied it, and essentially came out with a design to allow for the flex, which is this control, controlled flex technology in the crossbar, not only allowed for the flex, but also put a urethane dampener inside of that that would slow down that chatter, that vibration that you would feel uh, with an open cockpit style handlebar. So, that being said, you add the controlled flex and we put Teflon sleeves on the inside of the clamping surface against the handlebar to allow from fle for flex all the way through from the controls all the way down to where the bars are mounted. So essentially this is a very unique bar that, that gives you halfway between a closed bar and an open cockpit bar yes. with a little bit of vibration dampening in there so that you would end up having less fatigue at the end of the day. And it's very good for off-road riders, and it's very good for, for motocross riders. Um, smaller riders have started to opt towards this more open cockpit style, which is our podium flight handlebar. It's more similar to the Pro Taper handlebar. It's more similar to a Renthal fat bar, uh, but it's our own proprietary alloys. It's that 2014 T6 seamless triple butted alloy uh, that's been shot peened and hard anodized for strength. It's the same handlebar as our CFT with a different graphic style and without the crossbar. So the, the CFT retails for $124.95 and our Podium Flight Bar retails for $89.95. We also offer a 7 8 OE replacement bar, a mini bar, and ATV bars that are around $74.95. Now earlier in this episode, we talked about Ricky Carmichael and his new participation or more involved participation with ODI. They have just launched this Ricky Carmichael bar up here. Now tell us about this bar, Johnny. So as I mentioned, Ricky's been riding the ODI bars and grips uh, for the last five, six years now. And typically he runs the McGrath Bend and he's been really happy with it. And when the Emig Pros came out, he started running the Emig Pros. He's really happy with them. Uh, Ricky and Jeff have had a very good uh, kind of relationship that they've built over the years. And we wanted to do something special to kind of give back to Ricky and show some relationship that we have with the brand. So we developed a specific bend that's very similar to our McGrath Bend. It's a little bit flatter. It's a little bit straighter forward and has a slightly different height. So it is 100% specific to to Ricky, and then we did these bronze colored clamps and the bronze color graphics that tie into the Kashima coated forks and some of the trick bits that you'd see on pros bikes in the pits. Um, and so we did a signature CFT bar for him and we did a signature podium flight bar for him. Ricky actually rides uh, with the, the podium flight bar, so he likes to be able to move around on the bike a little bit more and have a little bit open area when he's climbing up over the front of that thing doing his big fat whips. And there you go, the brand new Ricky Carmichael bar setup that we just learned about today from ODI. We've got the rundown on all of the ODI grips so you can find out which grip is best for your application or your situation. And we also got a little bit of a brief history of ODI and why they do what they do and how they manage to stay in this industry for so long. Thank you, Johnny, for coming out today. We really appreciate the insight you've given us on ODI as a brand. Now, really quick, what does ODI stand for? Observe, design, innovate. And we've definitely seen that in the products that we've looked at today. And as we've looked at the evolution of the company, we've definitely understand why that name pertains to the products that they sell. I'm Kyle Bryce from Shopper Motorsports. Thank you for joining us. This is Johnny. If you like this video today, please give it a thumbs up. If you want more action like this coming directly to your inbox, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be part of the notification squad. Until next time, take care and ride safe out there.